In today's episode, we're going to take a look at the new Cura Slicer version 4.9. It's in beta. We'll look at some of its features, and then we'll get a sneak peek look at the new Cura Slicer engine called Arachne. We'll do all that on today's Film It Friday. Film It Friday is brought to you every week by the generous donations of these Patreon supporters. Cura 4.9 Beta was released a couple weeks ago. I've been playing with it. There's really not a lot of changes. It's mostly bug fixes. But let me show you what's changed. The first one is when you slice something and go into preview mode, it automatically goes into the line type. You don't have to drop down and find this. It automatically goes into this. And I like this. It gives you a different color for every feature. Like top and bottom layers are this yellowish color here. There's other colors here, like inner wall is green. I'll scroll down into this, and then let's zoom in a little bit. You can see the inner walls are green right here. They're green inner walls. So you can see how many walls you have there. Red is the outer walls, or shell. So you can tell which is shell and which is inner wall. Orange is the infill, and travel is blue. So you can see, let me zoom in a little further, you can see the travel. So this helps you understand what's going on inside your print. And then there's also a light blue for helpers, and that's this skirt. Could be a brim, could be a raft. That's going to be that color. What's new here is the white, which is called starts. It should be called seams because it's showing you the seam. But let me flip this cube around so you can see where the seam is right now, and it'll show up in white. Move this block to the side. So here's the seam. It's going to print at the top here, but then some of it's going to be on the Y, and then some of it will be at the bottom of the cube. Let's flip it back over here. I want to make the seam right here at this corner. So let's go into the print settings, search for seam, user specified, and then I'm going to select the position of front left because that's where it is on this cube. Let's slice it again, look at it in a preview, and look at now the seam is all the way on the edge. And this is showing you that. That's the new feature in 4.9. It shows you where the seams are. Another change is they've added the decimal point of the length of the filament. Here's 71 grams, 23.72. If this was real small, like 3 meters, it would show 3 on 4.8. Now it shows 3.72. So it's adding a little bit of granularity to smaller sizes. Minor change. When Cura version 4.8 came out, I had a lot of requests to redo this video I'd done before where I show per model settings so you can do different infills or other settings. So 4.9 is no different, so let me just show you right here. Here's a large CHEP cube. If I click on it, I can get dimensions of 60 millimeters square X, Y, and Z. Now I'll come down here and I'll click on Support Blocker. And that allows you to click on the print and put a little block. Now click away, only click the block, and now I can resize that little block. So I'm going to make it bigger than the CHEP cube. I'm going to make it 80 by 80, but only 20 millimeters tall in a Z direction, because I only want part of this. And then I'm going to just reposition that block I just made and center it to the CHEP cube. So I'll just slide it to the side and then back and then I'm going to drop it down a little bit. Now again, this is no different than 4.8. This is nothing new, but this is how it's done in 4.8, 4.9. Now click on that block and then come over here to per model settings right above support blocker. Click on per model settings and then the third one over is Modify Settings for Overlap. Click on that, and this is where you can change settings. These are previous ones that I did. I'll just get rid of those. And then you click on Select Settings, and it gives you a whole list of settings that you can change only in the area where the block and the chip cube overlap. So let's look for Infill. I'm going to change Infill Density and Infill Pattern. So I'll close that. Now right now it shows 20% and an infill pattern of cubic, which is the same settings that are in my sliced profile. So now I'm going to change those. Let's change cubic to triangles. And let's change infill percentage to 50%. That way I get a nice big infill on the top layers, or under the top layers. So I'll slice it again and hit preview. And now let's scroll through this and take a look at things. So I'll scroll all the way down, and here's the cubic infill at 20%, just like I would expect. But as I rise up, all of a sudden it gets flat, like it's going to do something different here. And that's right where these two overlap. You can see it. So if I keep going, I should see triangles at 50%. And there they are. There's the triangles at a 50% infill. 
So it's going to slice just that top section differently based on those settings I just did. So this is how you do it in 4.8 or 4.9. There's another new feature in Cure 4.9 and it's a menu for line width. Let me show you how useful this is. So I'm going to slice this with a wall line count of 3. And when I slice it, here it is. Now if you notice there's some really strange lines here. Pretty much every version of Cura does this. It does the outer lines fine, but when it gets to that inner line, it works so far and then starts doing the zigzag stuff. And I never understood why it did this. I mean, it's all on the inside of the print, so it really didn't matter that much, but it's really weird. Cura version 4.9, there's a new line width menu and it helps explain this a little bit. Now the top of the print looks fine. It, as it should, the line width and the width of this thing should fit five lines perfectly. But when I scroll down, the lines get zigzagged. Just the middle line. While this line width shows different colors, it's showing that Cura is slicing at a different line width in the middle of this thing. It doesn't do it at the top, only in the middle of the print. So this line width option in preview mode, is kind of handy. Let me show you how Cura is going to fix that. Now, if you ever see Cura start up, this is 4.8, you'll see a point where it says initializing engine, like it's showing here. And then eventually it'll continue on loading UI and everything else. It's that engine we're going to look at. There's a new engine for Cura that's going to be coming out soon. Now I have heard 4.9 may be the last version because they're switching to this Arachne engine. I'm testing the Alpha, I've been testing it for a while, but now it's in beta. I gotta download that and try it. But let's take a look at this. So let's slice this again with the same wall count, only we're gonna use this new engine. And here's the results. The same line width all the way down. I don't get those swiggly lines in the middle. And if we do the simulation, the nozzle just goes round and round, just the way I would expect it to. So I like what I'm seeing in this new engine. Maybe this will become Cura 5.0, I don't know. Like I said, I'm testing the alpha. There is a beta version, so you can download it. I'll put links to it in the description below. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos popping up. And if nothing else, click on that CHEP logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.